Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Now, is Jesus asking Philip because he's at a loss and doesn't know what to do and he needs Philip to tell him? Likely not. And when I first mapped out this lesson, I thought the first half was just going to be all review and we wouldn't really get to the theological issues until we got to the second half. But boom, first paragraph, we're already hitting, we're already jumping into one of the um, positions, which is predestination, it's election. Now review of that, talk about two different views. The one is Arminianism. It's named after Jacob Arminius, but I think it's really a misnomer because Arminianism is really just the default position of all humanity. It's really how pretty much everyone naturally thinks. According to Arminianism, they would say Jesus died for every single person who ever lived throughout all humanity equally. He sends out this call to every single person equally. And it is completely now up to man whether or not he responds to the gospel. Now, they'll acknowledge that Jesus died for our sins. They give him the credit for that. But ultimately, in the end, that last part of salvation, it's up to us to get ourselves saved. Conversely, you have Calvinism. After John Calvin, now he'll argue that God is completely sovereign in everything. Whether it be insignificant things like every hair that's on the top of my head, or a sparrow that falls from the sky, he is aware of every single thing from those insignificant little matters to the most important thing in the universe, which is your soul. Per scripture, God has his chosen elect. Another word, which we'll see in this chapter that Jesus uses several times, is his sheep. And it's according to his discretion, according to his choice and his glory, that he has written their names in the last book of life before the foundation of the world before anyone was born. Now the Arminians will acknowledge that Je like God, Jesus, definitely has foreknowledge of what will happen. And they also acknowledge that He controls every single molecule, molecule in the universe. But there's some logical disconnect as if to say what happens next in this narrative is still up to Philip and not up to Jesus. So we'll go back and we'll see exactly what scripture says, why Jesus asked Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Verse 6 says, he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So I guess the Arminian concept would be, uh, Jesus knew what Philip's answer would be, but this was still like a pass or fail test for Philip. Um, now don't get confused. When I say words like free will, it's not saying we're marionettes or robots who have no sensation of making choices of our own volition. Every Calvinist who ever lived has the same feeling you do that we make our own choices. We do what we desire. They're just saying that until God converts our heart, our desire is never to pursue Him. We have the same feeling as the Arminians, but instead of getting our uh, theology from what we feel in our heart and then making theology out of it, we go to the scriptures to see what the scriptures have to say. And we build our theology on what the scriptures say, no matter how counterintuitive it might be to our nature. Um, so the Calvinist position is easy. Jesus said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And I believe the he here, the pronoun refers to Christ. Because this is a story, not about Philip, but it's about what Christ will do with, to, and through Philip. Now we're not saying God forces us um, to do stuff that's counter to what we want, necessarily. But he arranges all the circumstances in our lives so that they'll produce the results that he desires. So when God tests us, like with Philip, it's not to see what we will do, but to help shape us into what he wants us to be.